here is integrated three. It's 10.2.1 lecture. Um, this is this one is on geometric series. So we just got done talking about arithmetic series, the ones where it's adding on a certain amount every time, and the function that's associated with a arithmetic series is a linear function. The function that is associated with a geometric series would be um, an exponential function. So we're going to learn how to sum up the terms of the geometric series. And you can use those in real world problems. You could use those for like, um, it says you'd be able to calculate how much a long term loan would really cost you because it'll, you know, increase more each time and you want to sum up um, so you can make good decisions. So um, we're just going to do 10-81 first so that you can kind of get your feet wet. And then I'm going to do a little proof and give you the formula where you can plug the numbers in and get the sum. Um, so 10-81 says, Caroline's helping her younger sister, Julie, with her math, math homework. And Julie was given this sequence, 1050, 250, and so on. She writes this equation. T of n equals 2 times 5 to the n. So we know that's like y equals a times b to the x. So that is how I like to write a, an exponential. Um, the 2 is always the, the zeroth term, and the 5 would be the multiplier. So um, here's, the, here's your graph, and I would expect it to kind of go up like an exponential graph. Caroline uh, says suddenly, no, no, you've written the wrong equation. The correct equation is t of n equals 10 times 5 to the n minus 1. Well, it turns out those are both the same equation. Did I show that, that they're both the same equation? Um, 10 times 5 to the n minus 1 or x minus 1 is the same exact equation as this one. It's just that this is the first term. And so how can I show that these are the same? Well, this is 5 to the x. Like, if I want to, I can go, um, this is 10 times 5 to the x times 5 to the negative 1. I can pull this apart. Well, 5 to the negative 1 is 1 over 5. This is 10 times 5 to the x times 1 over 5. 1 over 5 times 10 equals 2 times 5 to the x. So you can see that they're, these are equivalent. Now, in the arithmetic series, I always liked the y equals mx plus b form. And you would think I would like this form. Um, for these, but I don't. Well, I mean, I do, but um, it's actually easier to use for, an, for a geometric series, it's easier to use this being the first term and this being the multiplier. And then you'll notice you have to, you don't have an X anymore. You have to have an X minus one. So this is the first term. This is the multiplier. And this will be X minus one. Write them this way if you're doing geometric series because it'll help you later on, okay? And that's kind of, they don't come right out and say that, but they do, um, they are trying to bring your attention to the, the, the fact that there's two ways to write it. In letter B, it says, what are the advantages of writing the equation as Caroline did? And what are the advantages of writing the equation like Julie did? Well. Julie did it like this. So what are those? Um, I don't know. I guess the advantage is you don't have that little x minus 1 to worry about. Um, but you do have to go back and find out what the zeroth term is. So that's kind of a downside to Julie's method. This is Caroline's method. Um, the advantage to Caroline's is you don't have to go back and find out what the zeroth term is because you're just going to use the first term. Um, you do have to remember to put the x minus 1 or n minus 1 up here, though, instead of just x. 
Um, and you can always test it out by plugging in one of these numbers. You know, plug one of these numbers in and see if you get the right answer out. Like plug the two in and see if you get 50. Like two minus one, I'm just I'm checking. Two minus one is one, five to the one is five, and five times 10 is 50. So you can check it and make sure, like if you're trying to figure these out and write them, you can check them. Okay, so, um, so there's advantages and disadvantages. I'm telling you, write it like Caroline says, because it's gonna make it easier, easier for you later on. Um, and then number, letter C says, rewrite the equation T of N equals 18 times three to the N using Caroline's approach. So Caroline's approach, remember, is they want the first term and then the multiplier and then the n minus one on it. So how am I gonna find the first term? Well, the first term I can just, if that's the zeroth term and that's the multiplier, I can just put a one in here and find out what the first term is. So three times one is three and three times 18 is uh, 54. So 54 is the first term. So to rewrite this, and that's like Julie's form that she prefers, and this is Caroline's form. To rewrite this with the zeroth term, instead of having it this way, you can rewrite it the way Caroline likes. Now this is the first term. This is the multiplier. And then you just have to remember to have that n minus one on there. And if you wanted to see if those were equivalent, you can because you can break this up into three to the n times three to the negative one. Well, three to the negative one is one over three and one over three times 54, that'll just give you your 18 back. I hope that made some sense. That's 10-81. Um, so now I'm in your book, it wanted you guys to just spend all class time, the whole time just um, doing the 1082 and picking the payout and doing all that, but I don't see how we can really um, do all that without you together and your team. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk through a little proof for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask you, I'm basically I want you to come up with the formula for, um, summing up all the terms. So I'm gonna go back to this one that we started with, the one um, that Julie, she had this sequence and I just, I made up this problem um, just so that I can kind of show you how to sum these up. So if you sum these up, just the first five terms, if you add them all up to see what they make, you can just use a calculator. It's 7,810. Um, I can even get a little formula for this. Like we already talked about how the zeroth term would be two and I can do it like this. But I think I had kind of coached you guys on trying, let's, let's try to get this. Let's write it Caroline's way. So remember Caroline says the way to write the rule for this would be, um, I want it to be the first term times, what's our multiplier? It's multiplying by five, right? Times five, and then I have to go to the n minus one. And you're thinking, what? So let's look at it. Actually, I'm going to start a new um, part two because I think this is getting too long. In part two, we're going to look at summing up these um, five terms and getting a formula for summing up geometric uh, series.